Hi, this is Sadie Katz, and you're watching the 13th Wolfman. Ow, ow, ow! Hey everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman, and you know what? You know who I have with me today? I have Sadie Katz. We're talking Blood Feast. We're talking Wrong Turn 6. We're talking her new movie, Party Bust to Hell. Welcome to Sit Down, Sadie. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, I we, we just got done talking to you live on the on you know the Wicked Horror Show, and you're just a wonderful person to talk to. I I love this. How did you get into acting? Um, well, I Actually, I started from very young. I was into doing talent shows when you didn't have to have any talent. Um, <laughs> when you would do lip sync contests and things like that in grade school in the 80s. Not that I want to give away my age. And um, I just kept doing plays and things like that. And I always wanted to come to L.A. and pursue acting. And the second I got divorced, I took myself and my little two-year-old son and came to LA before I knew any better and the rest is history yeah you said on the live show that you have a 16 year old I know I do you don't look old enough to have a 16 year old thank you <laughs> I I was a very slutty uh 12 year old oh <laughs> I, I knew I, I, I knew some of those I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he's he's so amazing. He's a really good kid, and he's kind of trooped out with me um, uh, through my whole pursuit. And he's kind of actually made me take pursuing acting really seriously. And he's been really supportive always of me um, at my premieres and everything. And he's kind of made me take pursuing acting really seriously. And and it's been along for this wild journey, which I'm really appreciative. So, I mean, has he seen any of your movies? Because I you know. know. Okay. So I know I, I say that and then everyone's like, uh, your movies are crazy. But one of the things is he was always part of that journey. So in a weird way, he's, it's like, he knows how hard I work. So, um, when I first got cast or when I first was in a feature length film, there was obviously nudity in it. And, um, I remember he came to the theater and he sat next to the director and he knew that there was nudity because I always discuss things with him and, uh, he wore a baseball hat and in the scenes that there was nudity, I kind of nudged him or the director nudged him and he put the baseball hat over his eyes during the scenes and he looked he like whispers to me he goes mom how come you take so many showers in this movie <laughs> <laughs> and i mean he was really savvy because he saw me in plays and things so he knew how seriously i took acting it wasn't like i was someone who didn't really respect the art of acting and um right. you know he, he knew the drill so i think he it was like, I said, well, you know, in horror films, it's like sex or violence every 15 minutes. And that's how they sell, sell the film. So um, everybody else was much more scandalized about it than he was. He was like, this is my mom's job and that's how it is. And there's nudity in films. And my mom worked really hard to get here. So that was, that was other people's problem, not really my son. And he's not embarrassed by it. And you know, he still covers his eyes during the nude scenes, but he he still comes to all my films where I have racy scenes and, you know, we have a good relationship and he's okay with it. Yeah, oh, I think that's great. Yeah. So you've been a horror fan, a horror fan your whole life or did you just kind of fall into the genre? No, I've always been into horror movies. I mean, I was really into like Tales from the Dark Side. Do you remember that show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and monster do you remember monsters the one where like uh they would have the the monster family and then they would do the little shorts and i would read the fear street books oh did i just catch you on something no I, well, I i just don't remember i mean if it was a you said it was a tv show it was a tv show right before tales in the dark side and it was like hmm. a monster family and they would be getting popcorn and then they would show these little short vignettes same as tales from the dark side Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, the, oh, you're gonna have to look it up. I can't believe it I stumped to, you. It's not really a stump. I just just never. I don't remember it. I oh, you know. I maybe it was only on a season or two. I'm not sure. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Um, it was a really quirky little show, and I would watch Tales from the Crypt, and I'm <sighs> like, I had a little old black and white TV where you would spin the dial. Yeah. So, it was like I my had mom's. A, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my household, it's like I had a little 10-inch black and white TV, you know, and you just... Yeah. It, it, it was funny because it was a zenith and it looked just like the TV that was in the front room, but a shrunk down version. And it was this really putrid, like olive drab green. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like I, all my friends had flat screen TVs, but I just had like this old black and white one that like my mom gave me. That was like the old one. And we had yeah. like broken rabbit ears, but I loved it and I would watch it. And I remember watching the Oscars on it and like kissing the screen. I wanted to be an actor so badly. Yeah, yeah. Who, who are you kissing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just like, I, I just wanted it so bad. I could taste yeah. it. And I would, I would write down, you know, I would watch like wonder years and I would write down the scenes and, you know, film it. And I was just very obsessed with it. I loved it so yeah. much. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm with. I mean, I never wanted to be an actress, but I've always been obsessed with film. I, yeah. I, I still see a movie a week in the theater. You know. Yeah, I was really into Jodie Foster and the movie Little Girl Down the Lane, and I, I just that movie. Yeah. people would say I look like her. I had these, you know, my teeth were real small with these big front two teeth, and I just, <laughs> I thought, you know, that she was so great, and I just I wanted to be like a real actress and. You know, I never really wanted to be famous. I just wanted to, like, you know, I would play with the little kids down the street, and I could always cry on cue, so they would have That's me impressive. do all the dramatic stuff. They would be like, you know, have Sadie pretend that she'll cry. She'll cry. Make her cry. And um, I just, I would, every year, I would always listen to the announcements online at school, and I would wait for them to say when they were auditioning for plays. And, like, that would be you know, the only thing where I would fit in or feel special. And that was like so meaningful to me. So I wasn't an athlete and I was kind of a misfit. I didn't really get along with anyone. I, I, I know exactly. I, when I was in high school, I was a ghost. Oh, I, I, I did. Oh. Yeah. I didn't fit in with anyone. I didn't fit in with the jocks. I, I wasn't, a wasn't into the whole drug scene, you know, wasn't smart enough to be a brain, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was just a person that went there for four years, did everything they did had to do to get out. I was a ghost. That's oh, that. yeah. I I have this old green typewriter, and I it, that didn't the e didn't work, and I loved this typewriter, and I wrote this play um, that was basically like an anti drug play. Little did they know, but um, you know that was that I wrote the whole play and then I wanted to perform it in front of the school. And it was just like so important to me. And I think that's why it's so crazy because theater is like the catch all for, for everybody else who just, you know, if you're not a brainiac and if you're not a jock, like that's, that's everybody else who's like, those are the people that fall through the cracks. But that was my way of like my touchstone, like who I was. I don't remember even being anything but an actor. It was really important yeah. to me. My senior year, I joined theater arts, and I didn't join to, to learn how to act. I actually, again, I fell into that little ghost thing where I became the person that ran the lights, the person that did, did the back behind the scenes stuff, because I found that way more interesting than going out on stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, well, I mean, and that's, that's kind of what's cool about theater is you have – you know, the people who are on stage, but you also get to have the crew, which those are the people that are beautiful and they're smart and they're wonderful and they're so full of love. And that's a great place for them to be too. So, I mean, I just think arts are so important to pick up, you know, the people that could be lost. And sometimes those are the very first thing that gets the funding that gets pulled is for theater arts. Yeah. 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 That's terrible. You've got you got a new movie coming out 
well, it's coming out. And, well, you got two new movies coming out. Uh, first, let's talk about the Party Best of Hell. I am. <laughs> I love this movie. I can't say it enough. I really, I this this movie just grabbed on to this little piece of my heart that that loves satanic cult movies, stuff like Devil's Reign and Devil Times Five and Race with the Devil, and which to me is like my all time favorite one. And it just it 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 touched me. I I just love it. I need to get this on when it comes out on Blu-ray. I need to get a copy. Oh, I love it. Well, I'm I'm really hoping we're I'm fingers crossed that it becomes that instant cult classic. I mean, that's what it was made for. So I'm hoping that that's what happens and people really like it and people like yourself who are familiar with those titles gravitate towards it. So um, I, I think it has those elements of cult classic boobs, babes, blood and some some fun jumps i mean it, it doesn't take itself seriously it's supposed to be goofy and like a trauma right. film so i think that is you know kind of fun and there's some good music and some good jumps and uh, you're you're naming all the films that was inspired by and wolf kaninsky did a great job and michael sue is a a fun dp and he he chose some interesting angles so it didn't get stale on that bus you know, it could have easily felt suffocating, but the the wonderful double worshippers with some snakes and some spiders and things like that keeps it from being stale. So I'm glad that you appreciate it. So does that get a little hard to, I mean, I would say about 85, 90% of this movie is filmed in one spot. Yeah. You know, I mean, does does it get to the point where it feels monotonous after a while or not? Um, No, it was actually, it was... You know, it, it was fun. It's like a fun challenge to stay in one spot and have that, you know, the idea is I was supposed to be feeling, you know, the sexiness flow through me and all the animals coming alive and through me. So I think that that was kind of the challenge of the character. And I, I had fun doing that. And Rolf did a really good job directing me in that. And, um, you know, and the, Sin City buses was really awesome about um, letting us use their buses and, you know, for the sponsorship. And that was really rad. And um, there was something magical about filming in the bus. So that was cool. I definitely want to see this. At the end, they they, they tease a sequel. There's got to be a sequel. I know. I hope so, too. So fingers crossed. And you got, you got to bring, I mean, you got to bring Joan back. They better. <laughs> I mean, someone's got to drive I, the goddamn bus. I always say this, you know, like, like you, you'll hear you'll you'll hear people go, "Well, I don't know if they could ever bring my character back." You saw that they died. It's like, dude, it, it's called. No I mean, one never dies. Yeah. No, well, no, I'm, I'm always thinking, has anyone never watched a soap opera? Everyone always comes back as our evil twin. I know. <laughs> I know. I well, I that's oh, thank you. That's a great idea. I can, <laughs> <laughs> I could be Mona. Joan and Mona. Yeah, I love it. I'm already pitching it. I'll yeah, and, talk and, to the producers, Michael Mahal and, and Sonny. Yeah. And think about it. If if Joan is evil and she has an evil twin. Oh my God. I love <laughs> you. That's a great idea. <laughs> Perfect. You know, you get to you get to wear the eye patch, you know? <gasps> you should be a writer. Are you a writer? <laughs> no. That's fucking perfect. Joan, <laughs> Mona with an eye patch. But she has to start off really nice. You think she's good. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. She's gotta you be know. like it's really sweet. Yeah. She'd actually have to start out as the nun, you know, like like like, like hanging out somewhere and you think she's a, the perfect little thing. She's a nun with a with like a white eye patch. And then later later in the series, she she shows the real evilness. The eye patch becomes black, kind of a nod to Hitchcock, the way that Janet yes. Lee changed underwear in Psycho from I white to it. black. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Great. You pit, pitch it to them. Big increase. That's all. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I love it. No, I, I did. I love this movie. And then you got this Bill Murray experience. I know. Talk about two different movies, right? So what? what is, I mean, we talked about it on the on the Wicked Horror Show is that you you saw my date with Drew. That was kind of an inspiration for this. But what was the inspiration for? I mean, with him, with Brian, 
the inspiration was he'd been in love with Drew Barrymore since like E.T. I know. Well, I had just gone through like a really crazy breakup and, you know, was staying up late at night. And I, I talk about this in the documentary and was just like sort of in the internet black hole blah, of reading all these crazy stories about Bill Murray having these magical encounters um, with super fans or just fans. And it was around Christmas time. And I started to think, wouldn't it be so cool to meet Bill Murray? And I think just that idea had led me to get more and more excited about what it would be like to meet Bill Murray. And I think it started off as kind of an innocent idea and then it sort of spiraled and I got my friends excited about it. And then, um, you know, like all ideas, they start off really, you know, innocent and then it just yeah. kind of became a thing. And um, I got more and more excited. And then I ended up meeting PJ Souls and Joel Murray and a lot of other Bill Murray super fans. And the Bill Murray experience was born. And um, it, it came out through Gravitas Ventures. And it's already been released on all platforms, iTunes, Amazon, Hulu, Vudu, um, VOD. And now it's coming out on Blu-ray. And um dvd on april 13th wow i know i mean as an actress you, you're you're usually given a role and said okay here's here are the lines you know do the best you can with them give us give us this character but right. as a writer and director you are your own boss and do you find did you find that difficult to step out of that that actor's box and into a director's box um, I think it was really hard to direct myself because I just had to be myself. And that was kind of like nutty in a way because I, I had to like allow myself to be sort of vulnerable and honest in the moment. And that ends up affecting you in other ways because people don't really like a vulnerable version of you. People don't always live like People don't want to see you unhinged. They want to see you consistent and okay. So um, it makes people uncomfortable. So I think I I had to deal with like the personal things of people, that making people uncomfortable. Um, so that was really difficult for me because there was like a price I was paying in my personal life. And that was really painful. So in the end, that was the hardest thing of like saying as a director, I had to say, Sadie, you have to play this truly. And like the true thing was there was a desperation of wanting to finish what I start, which was to meet Bill Murray. But in my real life, I had to be like, you can't be this desperate because no one wants to be around you. So how do you do that? And that was, that's the magic of the worst and the best part of the documentary is Wow. That's, you know, what What do you say? People are like, you're acting like a fucking loony and no one wants to listen to it. But the director in me was like, who gives a shit? That's what the documentary is about. Keep going. So I, I definitely need to check little, this out. It's a little schizophrenic there, but that's what I did. And but I, I, I definitely yeah. need to check this out because I actually, I mean, my date with Drew, I, I fell in love with that documentary. I, I love I, you for saying that. I did too. I thought he was so I, sweet and sincere and kind. Yeah. I couldn't believe anyone would go. I mean, I, I was like, wow, how come I've never seen anyone do this before? Just go through all this trouble to my, try to meet Drew Barrymore. And nowadays, I can't see Drew Barrymore in anything without thinking about a Snoopy snow cone machine. I love you. <laughs> I, I thought that he was, he was somebody that I rooted for and I loved him. And I sort of felt that I had a rule that everything had to come from a good place in the Bill Murray experience. And I, I think there's a little bit more of a sadness to my documentary that I, that actually my date with Drew doesn't have. And I think part of it is because he had a lot of friends supporting him and I didn't really in mine. But I think the difference was people, you know, tended to be on his side more that you get with men that you don't really get with women. Um, wow. You know, which I... is a statement. I, I would be interested for when you see the uh, my my documentary, what your feedback is. That, is that you know, good, good or bad. I, I, I'm curious um, what you have to say about it. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, I I know that you uh you probably have to get going somewhere. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Where where do you, where if people are looking for you, where do you want them to find you out on the social networks? Well, please find me on Instagram under Sadie Katz, S A D I E K A T Z, or um Twitter at Sadie underscore cats, or uh, my Facebook is full, but please follow me there or, and I'll see if I can insert anyone there under the same thing. And um, I certainly appreciate you having me on the show and I love talking to you and I love your vast knowledge of everything. I really enjoyed our time together. Thank you. Well, thank you for Sadie. I am the 13th Wolfman and of course, I'm on the prowl. Prowl. <laughs>